The Park Terrace Hotel has enjoyed almost exclusively rave reviews since its opening in 2018. Whether or not it's deserving of them is coming up. It's hard to deny that the Park Terrace Hotel has a phenomenal location in Manhattan, directly on Ryan Park, across from the New York Public Library. I'll give some insight into how I choose hotels in New York in a future video, but the short of it is, public transit access is absolutely key. Tourist and local attractions are spread out throughout the city, so unless you're in New York on business with an office you need to commute to, your convenience to the subway is more important than how close you are to any single attraction. And this is one of those reasons why I love Bryan Park. You're within a few minutes walk of many subway lines. On 42nd Street between Grand Central Station and Times Square, you have easy access to a whopping 16 train lines, which will take you to just about anywhere in Manhattan, plus some other parts of the outer boroughs. After transit access is sorted, I like to know how close a supermarket or a pharmacy is to the hotel, as well as where my favorite coffee shop is. Originally opened at the end of 2018, the Park Terrace has 226 rooms spread out over 15 floors and is located on the south side of 40th Street, just west of 5th Avenue. The curb appeal and lobby are both tidy and understated. The reception area is a decent size for the city, if not a bit cold, but functional. Just behind the lobby are two elevators. When I was there, they were definitely not fully booked, but I'd imagine two elevators serving 226 rooms could create a bit of a wait in the future when hotels are again filling to capacity. On the sixth floor, you find the hotel's namesake, Park Terrace. With a lucky view of the Empire State Building to the south and Bryan Park at your doorstep to the north, the terrace is a wonderful space to lounge or work during your stay. The hotel succeeds at offering a nicely sized co-working space that is open and airy but also allows for a few corner nooks for those who prefer a private working area or just a break from their room. Just inside is the Terrazzo Lounge, which was not in operation during my stay. Note that its service was suspended due to COVID, but at the time of filming, there were no regulations in New York City that wouldn't allow them to open. Normally, this space is known for a continental breakfast buffet that is said to feature a spread of local New York favorites, such as bagels from Zucker's in the morning, and then transition to a cocktail lounge after dark. Before booking, give them a call to see if the Terrazzo will be open, if you're interested. For now though, there's a small coffee service offered complimentary for guests and it serves as a cozy indoor extension of the terrace. When staying at city hotels, I rarely put too much thought into the in-house food offerings, as there's usually just so many choices at your doorstep. But if you did want a bite to eat or room service, you'd find it at La Pecora Bianca, a nicely decorated and surprisingly large restaurant and bar open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner daily. Now we head up to my room on the 10th floor. 
Just out of the elevator, each floor has a filtered water station where guests can fill up their own bottles or take a bottle to go. In a city where complimentary water is becoming the exception, I thought this was a very nice touch. Buying your water outside is cheap and of course not a big deal, but when you're spending 300, 400, or 500 or more on a hotel for one night, free water should be expected. The hallways are bright and decorated in natural tones, but felt a bit big box hotel chain to me. For this stay, I chose a premier room for a couple of reasons. First, they're all corner rooms, and with an abundance of floor-to-ceiling windows, there's a lot of natural light all day long, even considering this room had a courtyard view. Secondly, at 291 square feet, it was around 20% larger than the standard rooms. One thing I'd recommend not going for, though, is the extra charge for a high floor. If I had views of the park, that would be one thing, but a high floor in a courtyard is a waste. I appreciate the well-labeled light switches, and there were plenty of outlets and USB ports throughout the room in the places where you need the most. The room was also outfitted with a Bose Bluetooth speaker, a queen bed, and a sofa with a coffee table that was height adjustable. I was thrilled to see an espresso machine along with a full stock of actual Nespresso pods. It's an expense for the hotel, sure, but it's being paid for. A pet peeve of mine is when a hotel will have an espresso machine, but only offer either generic pods or only stock two or three pods in a holder designed for six. If you're going to offer it, do it right, and the Park Terrace has. I didn't appreciate the 1990s IKEA-esque artwork, but I thought the kettle corn and the Mai Tai premixed cocktail was a really nice welcome amenity. So far, so good. Across from the entry door was the bright and immaculate bathroom. It was a standard size for this category of hotel and was stocked with Malin and Getz toiletries and had the best view in the room, as long as you don't mind twisting your neck to see it. One of the few things that lost the room some points for me was the size of the closet. It was plenty large for me or for a couple's weekend bag, but for longer than that, it will be tight. If I could change one thing, I'd switch the closet and the wet bar area so that you could fit a full-size wardrobe. Overall though, the room was bright, clean, and in great condition. And finally, in the basement, we have the hotel's fitness center. It was clean and featured another filtered water station, multiple types of equipment, and fresh towels. Now let's get into the flip-flop score. The room was well laid out with lots of natural light, 8 out of 10. These days, new doesn't always mean like new condition, but the park terrace excelled here, 10 out of 10. There was nothing wrong with the service, but there was nothing that stood out either, 7 out of 10. The common areas were well laid out and comfortable, but I wish the terrazzo was open for service, 8 out of 10. Location wise, it's really hard to do much better. Bryant Park is safe, beautiful, and full of life, 9 out of 10. I couldn't fault the cleanliness if I tried, an easy 10. For the F&B venues, I just felt like there was a disconnect. For this style of hotel, La Pecora Bianca just wasn't a good fit, 7 out of 10. Give me an unlimited supply of filtered water and an espresso machine and I'm happy, 9 out of 10. As we saw earlier, this location is convenient for everything from transit to shopping, Times Square, Grand Central and more, solid 10 out of 10. Finally, the connectivity was also good. Wi-Fi was free and had a download speed of 24 and upload of 13, 8 out of 10. Overall, the Park Terrace Hotel would be suitable for a wide array of guests and is propped up by a stellar location. Overall, it's an 86 out of 100 and gets my recommendation. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to see more.